All right, so here it is, my Ultimate B CNC. Uh, it is quite a bit more set up than it was. We'll get rid of that tape, we'll use that later. Um, I've got the electronics mostly sorted out. A uh, little bit of wire cleanup and a few things to do. I also need to hook up my pump for the spindle and get that running, but I do have uh, the spindle wired into the controller and it does turn on and turns off um, and responds to uh, speed commands. So I just wanted to run through kind of where I'm at and a little bit about the electronics and then I was going to run through some calibrations and uh, setting some soft limits for the machine. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do here with you now. Uh, but like I said, uh, here's the electronics. Um, so I've got an Intel Nook PC. Uh, so this is not a solid state PC. It does have a fan in it, uh, but I have found these work quite well. Um, I do plan to uh, A, have a dust boot and B, probably build some sort of enclosure, or at least walls uh, around the CNC just to try and keep the dust in. Uh, and that should keep the um, the fan and the PC a little bit cleaner. Uh, I've got the uh, X-Pro V5 controller. Uh, this is all wired up with the steppers and limit switch. Uh, you can see my probe there. Uh, I've got to finish off uh, finalizing the wiring, uh, but this is the wiring for my H100 uh, spindle. This is the model I'm running. So this is a 1.5 kilowatts uh, inverter, VFD inverter, um, running on 110. So out of out of the uh, spindle, this is the actual spindle cable here, uh, running its shielded uh, wire. Um, I probably need to take and put some strain release on there so that it's not hanging. Um, but it is all wired in. I've got it wired down to uh, power running into the power bar. And from here, I do have uh, four wires coming off of it. So on this spindle, uh, I'm using the uh, the 10 volt, uh, zero to 10 volt on the X5 controller uh, to control this. And then the relay on the X5 controller to turn it on. Uh, so essentially when the relay is tripped um, using the M3 command, the the VFD goes to run mode and then takes the zero to 10 input off of the controller into the VFD to control speed. Um, so I've got some jumper wires there set up. I probably will run a new uh, set of wires just to clean up that a little bit, but right now it does work um, and I can control speed and, and whatnot. So I can put some, I'll put some details about my settings for this specific VFD, um, I tried to get RS-485 working and it just didn't do anything. I don't know if that's something weird with this VFD. Uh, I know this isn't the the normal one that most um, documentation and stuff refers to. Uh, and I know that that has caused me some grief in, in the past, um, just being a little bit off spec from what, every, what all the guides and stuff uh, show. So just if you do have this VFD, this did work for me. I didn't get the RS-485 working, but um, if you have any uh, helpful hints on that, let me know. I did try the jumper and the obvious things. I did um, change the settings um, for the RS-485 control. Uh, I just never got any sort of response on the controller side. So if anyone has any helpful hints, let me know. Um, and then from there, I've just got the 24 volt power supply uh, feeding into the um, X uh, Pro V5 there. So I do have the probe set up and I have checked it that it is uh, getting signal. And then on the mini PC, I have a monitor set up and I am running, right now I'm running G Sender. Um, I've found the interface on G Sender to be uh, one of the cleaner ones and then some of the tools that it has for doing calibration and surfacing and some of those things are uh, quite handy. So that's why I'm currently using G-Sender. I have tried and installed a few of the other ones um, and I, I will probably play with and uh, 
test a few others out. Uh, I know CNC JS is popular as well as the uh, CNC Commander. Um, I use the Open Builds one as well, and I do like it. Um, but like I said, so far I am using G Sender, and so far so good. So with that, I'm gonna go through a couple calibration things here. Um, I will bookmark it so that you can kind of see what we're doing. Um, I probably won't show the computer a ton, just the way the monitor's set up. Um, if you have any specific questions about uh, the monitor, or sorry, what I'm doing on the screen, I will try to describe it. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm gonna run through is just the calibration. All right, so I've got the machine basically ready to go. I'm going to use the calibrate feature in G Sender uh, and the movement tuning uh, screen here. And I'm going to start with the X axis and I'm going to double check that it's moving the right amount. So I'm gonna say ready to start. So what it's asking me to do is mark um, a location on the machine. So essentially you can see kind of the guide marking the X axis so that we have something to measure against. So what I like to do, um, and I've found works reasonably well, is to use um, some painter's tape. So I'm just gonna move down to the machine here. So here you can see um, my X axis. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the um, setup block. I've used these before in the build to help square things and stuff. In this case, I'm gonna use it to create an index point. So I'm gonna take a chunk of tape it off here and using the the factory edge of the tape is what I want to do um, but I'm going to take my setup block and drop it on my machine I'm going to take my setup block and I'm going to index it against the x axis or the z axis plate here and just hold it in place and then I'm going to take the tape and push it up against the block and then I'm going to secure the tape in place Okay, so now with the tape in place, I'll remove the block. And now I've got my location marked. So back up on G Sender, if I can get high enough there. So on G Sender, it, it basically has a step to validate, yep, I marked it, great. And now it's saying I'm gonna move the machine 100 millimeters. So I'm gonna click that button and we're gonna see how far it moves. Okay, so I'll come back down. So we're gonna check and see how far the machine moves. Okay, so the x-axis has moved. So now what I do is I take my tape measure and my setup block. I index my setup block back on the same spot. Make sure it's flat. And I can measure up against here. So when I measure, so I'm measuring 125 millimeters. So I asked the machine to move 100 and it moved 125. So back up on G Sender, what I'm gonna do is, get back up there, I'm gonna type in, in the set travel, what it actually moved. So in this case, I measured 125 to my mark. So I set travel. So basically what G-Sender is going to do is it's going to do the calculation for me and I'm going to hit next. So it's going to come up with a warning. It's going to say, hey, you requested the machine move 100 millimeters. It moved 125. Obviously there's a problem with your value. So in this case, it's going to update my dollar sign 100 value, which is my um, steps per millimeter for my X axis and it's gonna have me confirm, hey, do you actually wanna make this change? In my case, I do, um, because my machine is moving too far. So I'm gonna set my dollar 100 to 320 from 400. So I had the steps per millimeter wrong. Um, again, it makes you confirm that yes, that is what you wanna do. So we're gonna confirm that, and now it's done. So now we have the option to restart the tool. So I'm gonna say, sure, restart. I'm gonna pick the x-axis again, and I'm gonna move it back a bit. Right. 
Just to reset it, make sure, basically want to make sure that I have enough room for it to move. Um, so I'm going to say ready to start. And it's going to tell me to um, do the same steps over. I'm going to set a mark. I'm going to t uh, tell it to move. And then I'm going to measure that move. Um, so I'm just going to move you back down to the machine. So on the machine here, I'm going to take my piece of tape off, put my setup block back on, make sure it's square. And I'm going to set my piece of tape. Take my setup block off. I'm gonna go and tell the machine that I've completed the marking step and to move the axis 100 millimeters. So the machine has moved 100 millimeters. I'm gonna take my setup block, set it here again, make sure it's square, take my tape measure, and I'm gonna measure. And look at that, we are dead on 100 millimeters. So now my machine is moving the right amount based on what I'm asking for. So in the software, I now tell it that, that, hey, yes, I asked you to move 100 and you did move 100 millimeters. So I'm gonna say set travel next and your X axis is tuned, no need to update the settings. So great. So then what I can do is I can restart the tool and I can do this for my Y and Z axis. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna set it so that uh, you're just looking at the machine and I'm gonna go ahead and do the same steps I just did, but I'm gonna do it for the other, the other axes here. I'll zoom out a little bit. Um, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna say ready to start. I'm gonna tell it to mark. Again, I'm gonna use my setup block right here, maybe come down a little bit there. So my setup block, I'm gonna get it square to here. Maybe I'll do, hmm, that'll work. So you just want somewhere that's easy to index um, so you can re, uh, reproduce it easily. So again, I'll take my piece of tape and I will Set my piece of tape square. Double check my block was square, good. Okay, so on the software, I'm gonna say the mark was complete and to move my Y 100 millimeters. The machine's gonna move back. And again, I'm gonna take my setup block here, put it on in the same location, make sure that it's square, hold that and double check. So in this case, again, um, I'm guessing I had the same steps per millimeter for both X and Y, um, which were incorrect. So I'm moving 125 millimeters. So again, on the software, I'm gonna put in the travel was actually 125, set travel, tap next. And it's telling me that it needs to update my steps per millimeter again. I'm gonna say, um, Yep, go ahead and update those please. And perfect, and restart tool. So in the software, I'm gonna move the Y back here a bit. Okay, so I've got the Y kind of back. I'm gonna set my block again. And again, now that the settings are updated, we just want to verify that they are working as intended. So once your block is set up, make sure that it's as square as you can kind of get it set. Put down your piece of tape. We're going to say in the software, ready to start, marks complete, and move axis 100 millimeters. Make sure to move. It'll run over the tape, but it won't run over a setup block, so make sure that the setup block's out of the way. Move axis. Okay, so it's moved its 100 millimeters. Then we'll put the block back in and hold it down. And I can see now, oops, if I don't push my block out of the way, that we are moving 100 millimeters marked on the tape. 
So that is perfect. I'm gonna say set or next here. Um, and we are good. And I could restart the tool at this point. So that is how you would set so that, that's how you calibrate your axes. So that is perfect. So now what I can do is I can take the tape off. So once your axes are calibrated, the next thing to do is figure out how far can your machine actually move. Okay, so I'm going to leave this tool and I'm gonna to go to the, I'm gonna home the machine. So we home the machine. Okay, so now we can see that on the machine here, if I go up and zoom in a little bit, you can see that we're at minus 250 minus 250 minus 250 across the different axes. So it, that's the distance that it has pulled off, um, has come away from those, uh, from the limit switches, which is what we want. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the jog feature. Um, I'm gonna start with X and essentially I'm going to jog it over um, to see how far I can actually move the machine and not have it collide with anything. So in this case, I'm gonna start moving over. Because now we know that the machine is moving the right amount. When I tell it to move 100 millimeters or 10 millimeters or whatever, I know that it's moving the right amount. So now I need to figure out how far can I actually move it before it hits something. So as you can see here, we're getting close to that edge but we're not hitting anything, which is what I want to see. Um, and what we're going to do is we're essentially going to set the soft limits. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to bring down the Z axis because really that's what's going to hit first. So I'm going to bring this down and just make sure nothing's going to collide. So you can see how close that um, Z axis is getting to the side beam here. So we don't want that to collide if it was at um, its lowest point, right? Uh, so right now, if I move this, over and you want a bit of a margin of error because you know things happen right so right now that gives me a full movement of 80, 807 millimeters um, and you just want to mark that down uh, I'll show you where we'll, we'll change it later uh, but right now I just want to mark that down for reference later so X 807. Okay, so now we have that extent. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move it away from there. So we're saying 807. I might go a little bit conservative and set it to 800. Um, that'll give me just a little bit more wiggle room on this side. And I'm going to move this away just a little bit. And you know what? Maybe it will. So that's set to 800 right there. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move Y forward. Okay, so now the Y axis is coming forward. We wanna see how far it can move before it's off the machine, basically. Because again, as I come forward here, as you come forward, Obviously the machine, the spindle can come forward of the machine, but I may not want that. Um, for safety reasons, I may not want it to extend past, you know, past here, my spoil board will be attached on here. I probably don't want, um, I don't want it to come 
out past this. There are reasons for that maybe later, uh, but for right now, that's what I'm gonna essentially do. Let's move it forward. Maybe move the z-axis down a bit more just to double check. And so let's bring this forward just a little bit more. So essentially what you're looking for is the bit, um, you know, to be kind of at the front of that spoil board. So I'm going to go a little bit like this. And so there's a couple options here. I could use, again, the one, two, three block. So I've got this lined up. I could line it up with center. You know what? That's going to be pretty, pretty darn good. I don't know. I guess I could bring it forward a little bit. But again, you want a little bit of margin of error. So that's probably about as close as I want it. Um, and that brings the bit right to the front of this, uh, right to the front of uh, this extrusion, which is uh, pretty much as much as I'm gonna get out of it. So. That is 740 millimeters. Okay. Um, the other thing is on the uh, Z axis, we wanna take and look at that as well. So on Z, I've already moved it down pretty, pretty far, um, but I'll just bring it over here so you can see. Maybe I'll just uh, unclip this one second. Okay, so on here we can see that between the nut and the coupler, there's not a ton of room. So I'm going to move this a little bit more. You're going to see that gap uh, close a little bit here. So essentially what we're doing is we're lowering the z-axis. So we want to make sure that that nut doesn't collide. And again, we want to leave a little bit of wiggle room as well. I mean, would I be milling stock that low? Probably not, but especially once I get a, a bit in there. Um, so you want to leave yourself enough room that, you know, it's not going to cause you any grief. So I can see on screen that my Z axis, I've moved down 168 millimeters. Um, 0.92 or whatever. Um, I'm gonna set that to around. Uh, I'm gonna set that to around level, a round number of 168, and call it a day. All right. So I'm just gonna take. I'll put you back here in the holder, and um, so I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with those values here. Hopefully on screen. So the nice thing in G Sender that I discovered as well, so I'm gonna mark down the Z was one, six, eight. Okay. So then what I can do is I go into firmware up at the top. And this is essentially all of the settings of your machine. So what I want to do, so here you can see step idle delay, 255. This keeps the motors active all the time. Um, so if you want this, if you want the motors to go um, into a sleep where basically they're not supplied power, um, you can do that. But the problem with this is that if you're doing a bit change or something like that and you don't get to it right away, um, the motors might go to sleep and then you go to do the bit change and your motors move slightly. Um, so if you set this to 255, then the motors are always energized um, and you have to manually turn off your controller or disable the motors to get them to go to sleep. So keep that in mind, it is a handy feature in some cases, but you may want uh, to adjust that depending on your jobs and stuff like that. But what I want to do with the numbers that we just gathered was scroll down here. And so you can see you can adjust all these and it does have a great description of what those different things are. Uh, so here's the values that we changed earlier. So this is the 320, this is the steps per millimeter uh, that we use the calibration tool to determine. So that's great. Uh, so we're gonna keep going down here. 
and we are going to, sorry. Okay, so here's what we wanted. So the X uh, axis maximum travel, the Y axis ma maximum travel, and this is for your soft limits um, and homing searching distances. So what you wanna do here is you wanna set these um, to the values that we just discovered. So in my case, I want my X axis to be 800 is what we determined. Maybe I mean, we determined 807. Um, I think I'll go 805. Oops. So I type 805 and tab, and that moves me to the next. In the Y axis, we move 740, okay? And tab, and in the Z, we moved 168. So basically what's gonna, what that's gonna do is it's gonna set those as soft limits. So if the machine tries to go more than those um, limits, it's going to cause an error. Okay, so I'm gonna apply the new settings. And now they're applied to the machine, they're written to the firmware. So that's great, so I can close this and I'm gonna do the homing sequence again here. Okay, so I'm gonna tap home. And if I go down to the machine, we can see the machine is bringing up the z-axis. Three, two, one! So I can go to X and I can type in X807, okay? So we want to move X 807 millimeters. And we say go. All right, so I had a bit of a problem there. I forgot to do a step. So I told it to move, it moved. I had to hit the emergency stop button. Uh, so I've reset the controller and ready to go again. So when it comes out of alarm mode or when you reset the controller, uh, it needs to home. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to home. Machine's gonna home. And we are all set. Okay, so I'm going to move it away from there a little bit. Okay, so what I wanna do in the software that I forgot to do is there's an option to respect the limits. So soft limits enabled. So basically what, I'm, what this is saying is, yes, we want to, um, we want soft limits and we want to respect them. Now what this does is it does force that your machine be homed each time. Um, but as long as you have limit switches, I do think this is a good option. It keeps you from doing something you shouldn't. It keeps you from sending your machine somewhere it, it shouldn't. Um, and it's just an extra check. Now you can, you can turn the hard limit on, which means that if it touches an end stop, it will, tr it will trip. I don't necessarily, as long as you home the machine and you have your soft limit set, you shouldn't need the hard limits. You shouldn't ever reach them. You can turn them on if you want. I have read and seen enough people say that doing one or the other is better and generally soft limits when they're set up properly is a better way to go. So that's how I'm doing it in this case, but uh, feel free to correct me or um, otherwise advise. So I'm gonna apply those settings now we're going to leave here. I'm gonna home the machine again. Okay, so machine's homed. Now I'm gonna use the go to button, which basically just tells the machine to move. I'm gonna tell it to move negative 807 millimeters. Okay, and I'm gonna say go. So there, right away, it didn't even move it went to an alarm screen. So if I close this, what is the alarm? Soft limit alarm. So basically, oh, sorry, I'll zoom you in here. So it immediately said, soft limit alarm, you can't move here. Um, and it stopped the machine from, from having an error that would cause me to have to hit the emergency end stop, which is, or emergency uh, stop button, which is what I was hoping to uh, show you the first time. <laughs> So it has an option to unlock the machine. So I click that to unlock. 
and I need to home. Okay, so now I home the machine. It sets it back up and brings it out of alarm mode so I can rerun, okay? So that's the advantage of, of setting your um, machine limits and then setting soft limits uh, required, which I think is great. So for right now, I've got the machine calibrated as far as steps per millimeter. I've got my extents set for my X, Y, and Z. I'm, I'm gonna stop the video there. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, if you have any questions or uh, comments or anything else, let me know. I do have some MDF down here. Uh, it's not quite big enough. I will cut another sheet. I'm still trying to decide uh, what to do for my spoil board. So if you have any recommendations on what you've done for your work bee setup, uh, let me know. Uh, but um, I'm planning on some MDF and play with it a little bit. I, I haven't settled on a specific uh, method just yet. So I will, yeah, hopefully in the next video. Awesome. Thanks for your time, guys. Hope you learned something.